everyone. If this video intro sounded a little familiar to you, odds are you have seen one of YouTube sensations David Dobrik's videos before. And if what I'm saying to you makes absolutely no sense and you've never heard that name, let me give you a little rundown. David Dobrik currently has over 11 million YouTube subscribers and he is seen as one of the most influential people on YouTube. He creates videos and goes out every Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays with each video being 4 minutes and 20 seconds long. Pun intended. <laughs> And his videos range anywhere from just tidbits in the car or at home to buying his friends cars, giving them money, pulling harmless pranks on them. They're just all over the place, really. It's whatever David feels like doing. When he gets an idea, he does it. That's it. So, since David is one of the most influential people on YouTube, how does he get these fans? Does he go about it in an ethical way because he's just talented and he knows what he wants to do and he's good at what he does? Or... Is there an underlying message to it that not a lot of people know about? He has so many subscribers. Is he just funny and everyone knows it and everyone's like, oh, I want David because he's funny. Or is it something like David thinks he's funny, but he's not. He's hurting the people around him. That's the underlying message. Whether he knows it or the people around him know it, it's just, that's what it is. The premise of this video is to look at David Dobrik and his brand and how he portrays himself as this influential person to the whole YouTube community, but really he bases himself off of these unethical standards. And we're going to look at that in three different ways through this video. The first one being his YouTube video titles and merchandise line. The second one being this thin line that he can or maybe can't draw between harm and entertainment. And third, the paintball gun experiment, which I'll get to on later in the video. So, let's get started. First, we need to look at what being ethical means. Being ethical means that you're conforming to the accepted standards of conduct presented to us by society. AKA, it's okay to do if you're being an ethical person. You did good. Second, we're gonna need to look at what the word unethical means. Now, the prefix of the word un means not. So you can apply that to anything. If you're unhappy or not happy. If you're unamused, you're not amused. You didn't find it funny. And if you're unethical, that just means you're doing something morally wrong and whatever you're doing is not accepted by society because it's just plain wrong. Bottom line. No if, ands, or buts about it. It's wrong. But what do these have to do with David Dobrik? Yeah, he pulls a lot of Franks on his friends. Those are just funny. Yeah, sometimes they're mean because someone's like, oh, David, that hurt. But, and that may be true, but let's dive into this unethical side of things by bringing up the first point and looking at his vlog titles and merchandise line. Now, a lot of his titles range anywhere from we had to take him to the emergency room to secretly recording from closet, freak out, and to a horrible reason to bring him in the hospital. A lot of those have to do with harming people and putting them in awkward situations, which I wouldn't want to be in. And all those titles include something called clickbait. Now, if you're not familiar with the term clickbait is, it's something that is used to make people want to click on a hyperlink to watch or read something. And pretty much David relies on that emotional pull of clickbait for people to watch his videos. And they don't stop with his video titles either. They go on to his merchandise. About 75% of the merchandise sold by David Dobrik has the words clickbait written across the chest or on the hat or the sweatpants or the shorts or whatever he's selling, it has the word clickbait in it. That is his brand. Now, if we look at clickbait, and we look at the word unethical, we can kind of put them together. Clickbait doesn't give you the full story. Clickbait just gives you something to make you watch the video, but when you watch the video, the video and the title don't add up. The title is supposed to tell you what you're about to see, but you feel cheated when you don't get the full message. But if David is basing his whole brand off of clickbait, isn't he essentially basing his brand off of false reality and unethical standards? In a recent article written from Wired Magazine, journalist Brian Gardner states that clickbait is becoming harder and harder to pin down meaning that David's more likely to get away with his unethical ways because people can't distinguish anymore between what an actual headline is and what a false one is. So David's videos 
aren't going to add up with his titles, but people aren't going to know that. And that's a morally wrong thought process within itself. Knowing that your title doesn't add up with what you're giving, you're just lying to your community. And I think you should feel some remorse when doing that. Even though he bases himself off of clickbait, I think there should be some feeling in there. And whether he chooses to ignore it or not, deep down you know that something isn't right when you're giving your fans a false video from what you initially said it was going to be. Gardner also comments on this emotional pull that we have when we want to click on a hyperlink that takes us to something. And Jonah Berger, a marketing professor at the University of Philadelphia, also wrote a book called Contagious, Why Things Catch On. And he states that people don't click on things just because they're positive. When we care, we share. And that's for awe and excitement. But it's also for anger and anxiety. When you click on a video and it's emotional afterwards or freak out, that pulls something out of you. That draws you to know, well, why? Why is it emotional? Is it emotional just to that person? Or will I feel emotional afterwards too? It's these key words that people draw on that really excite us and they get the heart rate going because you're like, oh, I gotta know what happens. And sometimes you get disappointed because you think, oh, this word, like anger and anxiety and excitement, it has such a heavy pull on it. But when you watch that video, does it pull and give you that much emotional feel that the title did? The words that you use in your title, they have to measure out with what the video gives you. Because if not, you're off balance and one's going to give you less than the other. Now that we've taken a minute to look at his titles of his YouTube videos and his merchandise, let's flip the switch and look at harm versus entertainment and how to draw the line between the two. Or if you can't even draw a line. How do you know when someone's gone too far on a prank? Is it when they ride a motorcycle into a pool and end up breaking their collarbone and shatter some ribs? Or is it when you just hurt someone's feelings and they take a joke too personally and then emotionally they're hurt? Which one's worse? Being in physical pain or hurting someone's pride and who they are as a person? Does David know the difference? But he still gets millions and millions of people that drive themselves to his videos three days a week to see who he can hurt next. I think there's a German word that fits David and his brand perfectly and that is Schreudenfreude. It means that you feel joy or contentment out of watching people's misfortune, which, sorry, but let's take it back to the first definitions and, uh, unethical. In an article titled Schreudenfreude, A Not-So-Secret Joy of Another's Misfortune, writers and psychologists Marie Dossenborough and Paul Harvey did two studies to see what brought out people's Schreudenfreudes and if they were able to and wanted to share these with other people. The first study found that participants were willing to share their Schroed and Freud's because they felt it was deserved and resulted from an unethical behavior. Putting these findings into our David Dobrik example, if you watch David's videos, you'll find he's always smiling or laughing even after this awful thing just happened. Sure, he'll be like, are you okay? But it's not like, oh my God, are you okay? It's, <laughs> are you okay? Like, there's... There's no remorse in his voice. In addition to the studies done by Dawson Burrow and Harvey, there was also a study done for First Monday, an online peer-reviewed journal, where they looked at the YouTube ranking culture, which David Dobrik participates in on a daily. Writers for the article, Renee Hobbs and Silky Graff, looked at this YouTube pranking culture and saw that it brought out people's Freudenfreuds. People who interact and engage in this, they want to share it with viewers. So while David isn't necessarily viewing his own videos, he is interacting with all the pranks. He's the one that curates them in his mind. And he's the one that posts them out there. Because pranking people and watching them feel their pain, it's his Freudenfreud. It's And he shares it with other people. So he's basing all his videos off of this terminology and is just putting it out there in the world for people to see and just wants to get the views and not look at what the pain people are feeling and yeah they probably laugh it off because they know David's getting these views and David does other things for his friends it's not like he's only pranking them he buys them cars he gives them money 
they all live under the same house like he does other things for them so i think his friends think this behavior that's going on and what goes on in david's mind is okay because they get a lot out of it so he gets their consent for everything but it doesn't come freely he bribes them for it it's not like a free will kind of thing it's not a free situation they're in because if you see a lot of people that don't give in to his antics and don't do bits for his vlogs they're not in a lot of them because if you're not going to give in to his temptations then why would you be in it continuing with the trend that david treats his friends like they're just part of some overall prank in his world let's get into part three of the video which is my paintball gun experiment in recent videos david has been going up to two or three of his friends and asking this simple question to them if i give you a hundred dollars uh -huh. will you let me shoot you with a paintball gun once within the next week okay yeah okay. so far david hasn't received a no on his question it just makes him poorer and hurts his friends so is it because he's giving them a hundred dollars i wanted to know so i decided that I would do the same thing with my roommates. So let's go see the results. Holland. Yeah. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Sure. What? Okay. If I give you a hundred dollars right now, Ooh. this hundred dollar bill. Yeah. If I give it to you, will you let me shoot you with a paintball gun once? But at any given time, I won't tell you when I'm gonna do it. Oh, for sure. <laughs> really. 100 percent yeah you say yes is it because i'm giving you a hundred dollars oh definitely so if i, <laughs> I wouldn't do it for free hey kelsey hey if i gave you a hundred dollars right now oh shit would you let me shoot you with a paintball gun i'm not gonna tell you when but i want to shoot you with a paintball gun but i just gave you a hundred dollars so i mean yeah probably is it because i gave you the money yeah money's Probably. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sarah. Yeah. I have a question. Okay. Okay. If I give you a hundred dollars right now, would you let me shoot you with a paintball gun? I won't tell you when. I'm just gonna shoot you randomly, but you get a hundred dollars. Can I set a rule? <laughs> no. It's either you take the hundred dollars and I shoot you, or how many times? Like, is this a one-time shot? Just once. Shot? But I won't tell you. It'll be a surprise. Yeah, I'll take the hundred dollars. You'll do it. Yeah. Is it because I'm giving you money? Yes. Would you do it for free? No. Turns out, all of my roommates did the same exact thing that David's friend did. However, while David's friends didn't say yes, they did it for the money, all of my friends did. And as you saw, one of my roommates, Sarah, she wanted to make a rule for it. People don't want to get hurt unless they're getting something out of it. We've already looked at what the definition of unethical means, and we've already applied it to David in many different aspects. But let's apply it to this specific paintball gun experiment situation. Shooting your friends with a paintball gun is in no way, shape, or form unethical. It's just mean. It hurts them, it puts them through pain. So it's not necessarily unethical, it's just a mean and malicious act. Now, if you were to get their consent to then shoot them with a paintball gun, then it turns into an ethical act. His friend's consent isn't freely given. He has to physically hand them a $100 bill for them to say, yes, I will let you shoot me with a paintball gun, which is an unethical act. After I shot the bit with one of my roommates, Kelsey, we were talking about this whole experiment I was doing, and Kelsey is an avid viewer of David Dobrik. She knows the YouTube community, she knows how things work, and she told me, if you came up to me beforehand and said, I want to do this for a YouTube video, I probably would have done it for free, even if you would pretend to give me the $100. And that got me thinking, does David actually give his friends the money afterwards? Yeah, in the video it's, it shows he does, but from the views, you know you're gonna get more fame. You know you're gonna get more than $100 out of it. So, does it make it look like he's giving him the money and then he just takes it right back to obtain more for himself? Cause him and his friends know they'll gain more at the end of the day. What really goes on behind the scenes of a David Dobrik vlog? Nobody actually knows. Cause I think people are too afraid to come out with it. I kinda came to the conclusion that, one, the term Freud, I don't think it applies to me which is good, I don't want it to, I do not want to share the misfortune of others, and two, it goes to show some of the lengths people like David and his friends will go to for a little fame and money. Making that line between unethical and entertainment something that David doesn't know how to draw yet, and I don't think he ever will. So after looking at titles, merchandise, drawing that thin line between harm and entertainment in the paintball gun experiment, 
I think we can conclude that David and his brand is unethical. One, he bases his brand off of clickbait. Two, he bribes his friends for his pranks. And three, he loves the misfortune of others and he shares it with the entire world. So in conclusion, David Dobrik isn't the man he says he is. Yes, he gives out cars and money and helps the people around him. And yes, that is all good and wonderful. But at the end of the day, is it worth it? You're hurting your friends. You're hurting the people around you. I don't care how many Teslas and Mercedes you give out. You need to stop. It's harmful. It's not going to get better. Little kids watch you. Little kids love you. They look up to you. Heck, I sometimes look up to you. But I don't want to be the person that rebels in others. Just misfortune. It's just not fair. And I think more needs to be said about it because people don't look into this stuff when they really should. And while this probably won't ever stop me from watching David's videos because yes, they're funny, I now know that there is a line that needs to be drawn and sometimes you just need to stop. Even if you don't think you do, you do. You need to look back on the situation and know when there needs to be more done.